so happy for uh, the guys in that locker room that um, uh, found a way. Uh, and uh, it was uh, – people doubted these guys all season long, uh, doubted our, our guys in that locker room. Not, not many people thought we would be in the position that we're in. Um, the guys downstairs did. And uh, um, this is a total body of work. That's not just this football game. It's a total body of work that those guys um, believed in uh, each other. They believed in the plan. Um, they uh, took ownership in their program, and uh, we had great player ownership. And then we rose up when people doubted those gr those guys down there. And uh, we beat a good football team today. And I told the guys we weren't going to get the Texas version of KU. We were going to get KU's best shot. And uh, uh, they're, they're a good team. I've got so much respect for Coach Leipold and uh, the program he has going there. And uh, um, you know, it was, wasn't easy, and I knew it wouldn't be. It was wet out there, uh, affected it a little bit. But uh, uh, in all three phases, uh, somebody stepped up at a different time. We made some uh, really good plays offensively early on, uh, throwing the football. Then we were able to rush the football later on, ran the ball a bunch in the third and fourth quarter when we said we had to establish the line of scrimmage. Um, we got stops on defense when we had to have stops. Um, Ty Zentner is an absolute stud. Uh, he keeps getting better and better and getting stronger and stronger as the season goes on. Uh, we got the big kickoff return from Malik. Uh, got the muff punt uh, with Echo. Uh, our, our seniors uh, stood the test of time today and uh, rose up and, and made plays. So um, extremely thankful to be here. Uh, ex extremely blessed in, in our fourth season uh, to get the opportunity to go to AT&T Stadium and, and represent this great school and university and football program. Uh, and our kids are so excited. You've kind of made a habit lately of flipping that switch at the second half with your defense. What was the key to tonight doing that? Uh, what hurt us in the first half was a, a real lack of communication with the noise and lack of hand signals, and we got misaligned a few times, and we had a couple of um, you know, uh, busted coverages and, or busted assignments, and that cost us. You can't do that against a good football team that can run the ball and throw the ball like they can. And we finally settled in a little bit. They run a lot of unbalanced stuff, and we settled into that in the second half, tackled a little bit better, got more pressure on the quarterback. Plus, we were able to rush the football and hang on to it a little bit longer. Is tonight particularly more satisfying for you because it's kind of the culmination of a four-year build? Without question. And, you know, uh, we didn't want to back in by having Texas lose yesterday. I, and we needed to earn this. And uh, the guys needed to earn this. And, you know, we were, we're smart enough to realize there was uh, a lot of pressure on us as coaching staff, us as, as player, the, the players, to – uh, finish this deal and and we had one more chapter in the regular season and they finished the chapter the right way and earned the opportunity you mentioned time a minute ago but just how meaningful is it when you're in a game and you get a 72 yard punt uh it's huge and this kid is is just so dialed in he is so dialed in um and uh, he wants the it, i love it he wants the ball in his foot and uh it's it's just he's so confident right now uh, and, and we have a weapon in the special teams game because of his ability to kick the football, punt the football, and kick PATs and field goals. And uh, that uh, <laughs> long touchdown throw to Sammy Wheeler, have you, when was the last time you saw a guy that wide open on the field? Well, we probably left one wide open somewhere along the line this season. But <clears throat> um, it's when things break down, it's hard. And when kids are scrambling around, and I thought Will bought some time and kept his eyes downfield and uh, made, made a really good throw. And what I saw was, as the game went on, <clears throat> the shorter throws, the catch it and throw it, because they hit some catch and throws against us, uh, and we hit some against them. The ball was getting so wet, it was hard to do that. So um, for us to get some of those explosive plays early was, was really key. One more quick one I wanted to ask. If your experience at North Dakota State playing in playoffs, preparing for team after team on short weeks, do you think that helps you in any way now that you're kind of doing the same thing here? Um, I, I couldn't tell you if it does, Kellis. Um, but uh, we know the task at hand. This is going to be a really tough task uh, at hand next week. But uh, we're going to enjoy this one tonight. And um, at least we're at home. And we get to have our six-day prep. So I, I'm guys are going to enjoy this one tonight first. Chris, how much do you feel like uh, on a night like tonight with the, the weather challenge and also a lot on the line? Did, did, I'm sure there's some plays you want back, but did you feel like this reflected a, a disciplined 
three phase team yes. in, in the way you want to see it and can you yeah. just expand on what ways it yeah. it felt like that to you well especially with the elements and we talked about it before the game you know we have to attack the elements and it's out of our control so we've got to put it into our control um, the ability to rush the football which we did in the second half the ability to hit some explosive plays uh, in the throw game and then the ability to finally stay in the fight on defense and get some stops it's a dang good offense but we had to stay in the fight one of the Biggest plays of the game is when they go for two to cut it to a one-score lead and they don't get it, and then we have a huge kickoff return after that and, and get a short field and all those things. It's complementary football, and we have to win in all three phases, OD and teams. Coach, this program has always invested in special teams, a lot of time and effort and focus. Is, is that really what paid off the most tonight was your special teams? Tonight it did. We have a lot of guys that are invested, a lot of guys that put a lot of time into it. We spend a lot of time in meetings. We spend a lot of time in drill work. Uh, we spent the whole spring ball on them, for crying out loud. And when you have guys that are the older guys, you know, like Ty and Phil, Malik, uh, Randon, uh, Jack, you, you know, Nick Allen, you've got uh, Seth Porter, you've got guys that um, have learned from the previous people that you need to uphold this. Uh, with our special teams, you and and these kids feel it's special teams, you and I believe it is. How big of a challenge is TCU? It's going to be a huge challenge. I think they're playing uh, lights out right now, but uh, um, we'll worry about that one sometime on Sunday. I'm going to enjoy this one tonight for another hour or two before I go to bed. <laughs> Coach, how valuable was this for not just your players from the state of Kansas, but that fan base and now once again holding the Governor's Cup? Yeah, um, you know. I know it's 14 straight years, I believe, but the biggest thing was this year because of because of where Lance has the program um, and how much better they are, and everybody can see that uh, that it was very satisfying because I knew we'd be a good football team and we had to earn it beating a good football team, and we did. And um, the fact that I, I don't know where it's going from here in the Big 12, I, I, I wish it could be the last game of the season because I think that that makes it really special. Did you like how your defense contained their rushing attack there, a little over four yards of carry for KU? Yeah, I see 63 plays for 307 yards, and I'd have thought they had 500 yards. I mean, it, it just it was, looked like one of those games. But they did a nice job of moving the sticks. You know, they were 6-12 to 12 on third down and did some really good things of, um, you know, I think the big tight end fullback kid's a really good player and finds a way to get open and, and makes good, good plays. And, um, you know, we did a nice job. You hold it, that offense to 307 yards is a pretty good effort. Um, and they get 27 points. Uh, and I think they're averaging 34, 35 points a game. They're, they're a good team. Um, we were just fortunate enough that we were able to get a few stops and able to rush the football in the second half. Coach, um, in the first half, Will seemed to kind of have it dialed in. And then in the second half, seems like an unforgotten weapon. And a guy named Deuce Vaughn kind of had a pretty good breakout second half. Just what did you think about the offense as a whole? Well, we uh, it was a tale of two halves for us. We were able to, to throw the ball and get some explosive plays in the first half, uh, which we needed because they were moving the football. And then the second half, we had talked about it. We needed to find ways to rush the football. They were, they were laying their ears back, doing a bunch of stunts and stuff. They had a good plan. And then we finally started to dial in um, and, and slow it down. I think adding the jet sweep series with Malik really helped us it loosened them up a little bit um, as well as you know DJ uh, runs for five yards of carry as well um, they, everybody got involved today for sure you've done the senior night thing here at K-State for a few years now but what were the emotions like with this group they seem to be really tight um, it was uh, an emotional group we changed it a little bit uh, this year it wasn't because of the rain we just changed it we had everybody come give me a quick hug, go see their families, and then go back into the locker room and reset. This wasn't a game to try to go 6-6 six and six or 7-5 and five or whatever. This was a game to get us a chance to go to AT&T Stadium. So we wanted to reset and refocus with everybody in that locker room, with myself and Coach True, uh, so that those guys were uh, locked back in, and they really were. 14 straight against Kansas now in the Sunflower Showdown, but with all the implications that were on the line tonight, what was different about this one? harder <laughs> it was just harder because they're a good team and uh there was a lot at stake and um once again uh, there's so many people that doubted these guys in that locker room and they weren't going to be denied tonight chris how'd you feel like you were able to replicate ku's offense through the course of the week uh, it's hard it, you can't you can't replicate the option you, you just can't um it, be, it 
with the blocking schemes as well as the speed of, of play uh, players that they have. Um, but uh, I thought I thought our guys settled in in the second half. It was really fast for us early because we couldn't replicate that. And then the second half, it, it uh, slowed down somewhat so the kids could have their eyes right. Uh, what was the effectiveness of Jake Drake Cheatham's play on the back end? You know, I, I, I got to look. I mean, Drake, you know, so you got 10 tackles. I think everybody was a, was a big factor. I don't want to pick. Uh, on one guy, I think everybody was a, was a big factor on defense, and uh, it was a total team defense tonight. Chris, I'm sure it's already all about the next game in some ways, but what, what kind of stamp do you think it puts on the program just to be able to say it's the first time in 19 years to, to go to the Big 12 title game? Uh, I, I'm I'm proud uh, of this group. Um, you know, they came through the pandemic and uh, uh, reset the locker room based on discipline, commitment, toughness, and to be selfless, our four core values in January of 2021. And they've lived by those four core values in everything they do, on the field and off the field. And so all the credit goes to, to those kids in that locker room. Okay, thank you. All right. Enjoy.